Hello people, uh, welcome back to my uh, recording or my programming series and we're going to take a, a closer look at Scheme, a type of Lisp programming language. And last time we kind of looked at the basics of the, of the Scheme language. Now let's look at what makes it uh, powerful. So let's say that we have a list. Let's define uh, my list as a list that says, say, 10, 2, 1, 9. OK, so now we have a list. If we say my list, we see that we get that list back. Now suppose we want to add all these numbers together. So 10, 2, 1, and 9. Well, we can call that sum, a function called sum, and it will give it a list. And the way that we will sum it up is we will check if the list is null. If it is, let's just return a 0. Else, let's add the car, car of the list. So the first number of the list, let's add that to the sum of the rest of the list. So that would be the cutter of the list. If I didn't make any mistakes, we should be able to do sum my list, and we get 22, which would be 10 plus 2 plus 1 plus 9. And actually, if you think about it, it's, it's the reverse. It's actually 9 plus 1 plus 2 plus 10, because we add this number to the sum of the rest of these. Well, what's the sum of the rest of these, right? And then we take the sum of the rest of those, and we take the sum of that. So it ends up being 9 plus 1 plus 2 plus 10. So since addition is commutative, we don't have to worry about that. But if we have other kinds of other kinds of uh, operations, you know, where commutative commutivity doesn't work, well, then we'll have to worry about that, right? So so here we have a sum. So suppose we wanted to define, say, uh, the multi the product, right? product of a list, right? We could do the same kind of thing. We want to multiply all these numbers together. Uh, we'll, we'll use a condition and we'll check if the list is null. If it is, we'll return a 1 because what we want to do is we, we don't want to multiply everything at the end by a 0. We want to multiply it by 1 so we have our answer. So let's do a multiplication and we'll multiply the first element of the list with the product of the rest of the list. Right? And if I didn't make any mistakes, we should now be able to do, say, the sum of my list. And we should be able to do the product of my list. Now, one problem with this is what if there are lots of other things that you want to do with the list, right? You, you, you have a sum, a product and maybe a division or you know some other thing that you want to do with a list item it may not even be numbers maybe they maybe your list contains strings and you want to you know make them all uppercase or something like that well you notice that a lot of this we could actually just copy and paste right if we wanted to do a subtraction we would copy and paste and we'd say this would be the uh, I don't know, the, the subtraction of it, and we'd replace this with sub, and we'd replace this with a minus sign, replace this with zero, right? And that would give us subtraction. So we're, but we're essentially, we're this, all these uh, functions have the same form. They're doing essentially the same thing. There's just a few things that are different. So uh, if we notice this, we can abstract this form out and create a a high level function that can do these things. So if we take a look at what, what's going on here, we're, we're given a list and then we output uh, a single number, right? So for sum, we, we, we're given a list and we add all the things together, we get out a single number. For product, we get a list and we're outputting a single number, which is just the, the product of all the numbers. So we're kind of reducing list down to one value. So let's call our new function reduce and we're going to give it a list, and we're going to give it a function, and we'll give it a null value. And that's because that's all the things that change here, right? So when we, when we the things that change between the sum and product, uh, we're given 
a null value. It's zero here. It's one here, right? We have a function where we have plus and multiply here, and uh, then let's see, and that's it. So those are the two things that are different, and we always have to pass in the list. So what we can do now is we can build this same form like we had before. So we check if the list is null, and then just return the null value if it is. Otherwise, let's run our function on the car of the list and take the reduction. Let's reduce the rest of the list. So let's uh, do reduce the cutter of the list, and we'll give it a function and in value. So now what this should do is this should allow us to do uh, to do sum and product by just giving it a multiply or add. So let's try it out. Let's let's try to reduce my list, and we're going to add everything together, and we're going to say our uh, our null value is zero, and that gives us twenty two. So reduce my list, multiply, and we'll say one, and it gives us one eighty. And this is the same as doing sum of my list and doing product of my list. Whoops, product of my list. Right, so we get the same answers between those two things, right? And But we did it all with this one function. So say we have lots of these other functions, they can all be replaced with that single function. Reduce. So we could have saved ourselves dozens or maybe hundreds of lines of code by just using reduce, and then when we when we want to perform a certain function, we can we can do it here. Uh, so let's say uh, so this was a pattern that we found in our code, and we kind of abstracted it out and made our code far more simpler by creating this reduction pattern. Now there's another kind of thing that we could do. Uh, maybe we're given a list, and we want to maybe double all the items in the list, right? So maybe we need a double function, right? So let's create a function called uh, double. And we'll, we'll double a number by multiplying it by two. So if we try this out, we can say uh, double three and we get six. Uh, double negative. 3.1 and we get negative 6.2 so now we have a double function but what if we want to double all the numbers well let's try it let's let's create a double nums and we'll be given a list and what we'll do is we'll check if the list is null and if it is let's just return the empty list Otherwise, let's construct a new list and it will have the double of the first item, right? So the car of the list is the first item. So we'll double that and then we'll, we'll construct, right? So that's the first item. So we'll add that with our construction to the double nums of the, of the rest of the list. So the cutter of the list. So if I didn't make any mistakes, oh, whoops, double, double, here we go. So now we can say double nums, and we can give it my list. Oh, whoops, I didn't type it correctly. So double nums, my list, and it doubles each number. So instead of 10, 2, 1, and 9, we get 24, 2, and 18. So that's pretty neat, uh, but what if we wanted to say take half, right? So we have this function called uh, define half of x is just dividing x by two, right? So now I have this half function. Well, uh, if I want to take half of all the numbers, well, now I need to kind of do this and say, okay, we've got half nums. Replace this with half nums and replace this with half. And that should be it. So if we do half nums with my, um, my list, 
Now it takes half of all the numbers that we had before. So 10 becomes 5, 2 becomes 1, 1 becomes 1 half, and 9 becomes 4 and a half. So that's great. But suppose I have lots of things that I'm doing right with these numbers, right? What if I want to take the cube or I want to take, you know, some other uh, things of the numbers, right? I, I'm going to write tons of these functions. And I'm, I'm going to do a lot of copying and pasting and I may make mistakes and there's lots of code that people will have to read. So, well, I, one thing that I could do is I could see, hey, there's kind of a pattern here, this, this structure I'm using over and over again and I'm only changing a few things. Uh, so let's, in fact, what am I doing? I'm getting a list and then I'm using some kind of a, a function, right? So I'm using a function, here I've got double nums and here I've got half nums and I'm using that function on uh, or like double and half and I'm using that function on every item in the list and I'm creating a new list by just applying that function to every item. Well, uh, let's create a new function that does that and let's call it say map and we're going to map a certain function to a list and the way that we'll do that is we'll check if our list is null and if it is, let's return the empty list. Otherwise, let's construct a new list and we'll apply our function to the first item in the list. And the second, uh, or the rest of our list, we'll just take, we'll just map the, we'll map our function to the rest of the list. Okay, so let's see if this works. Let's see if we can do, because uh, before what we had is we had double nums and we had my list. And so that was 24, 2, and 18. So what if we do map uh, double to my list? Ah, we get the same answer, right? And we can do the same thing here. We can do half, half nums and give it my list and it takes half of all the numbers or we could do map half to my list and it does the same thing so we find out that hey we don't really even need any of these functions anymore that we wrote they are actually uh, their purpose is served here right in this map function so we found a pattern in all of our code and by finding that pattern, we can just eliminate that code and now we can just use map everywhere. So that's really cool. So we're very much reducing our lines of code. That means we'll probably have less bugs. It's easier for other people to read and change and modify. And it also means we have more general code. So uh, that is kind of uh, a, a small introduction to to one of the things that makes Scheme and Lisp really powerful. It allows us to create these higher level functions. Uh, they're called actually called higher order functions, where they they're actually able to take in a function as a uh, an argument to its uh, to itself, and they can even return functions. Um, in this case, we don't really return functions, but you can do that. And so this is a very, very powerful uh, way of working. And so if you find patterns in your code, you can actually abstract them out and uh, create new functions. And these, these patterns, reduce and map, are uh, very common patterns that happen in, in, inside code. And so they, these are actually kind of standard names for these kinds of actions these kinds of patterns there's actually another one called filter where we can say we want to have we want to give a list and we want to give some sort of uh, condition uh, like say I want everything that I want uh, give me every item you know less than 10 in in this list and it will filter out every item that's that's uh, greater than or equal to 10 right and that's another common pattern so it, I think from this, you've kind of learned a little bit on how this works. Uh, I would challenge you to try to write your own filter function, right? So de de define, so define filter, and 
you'll have some sort of um, condition or test and you'll have a list right and write the rest of this out right so, you, so what do you do right you're probably gonna have a condition you're probably gonna check if the list is null right so write write this and the idea is you want to be able to say uh, you know be able to filter out things that you don't want in a list right you know filter out everything that's uh, you know greater than than two or less than one or you know things like that so that's kind of an exercise for you to try out and see if you can understand how to do these uh, higher, higher order functions so that's all I wanted to cover for today uh, thanks for watching till next time